I'm filming a video today that was made for me and this YouTube channel. Behind me is the largest football stadium in Scotland. It is home to Celtic, the champions of Scotland. I think 11 out of the last 12 seasons. You begin to lose count when it comes to Celtic with how much they've won in modern times. Today's football match couldn't be much different from the ones that are usually seen here behind me. We are gonna watch the bottom two teams in the bottom tier of Scottish football. One of the hardest things about trying to run and grow a YouTube channel in 2023 is come up with unique ideas. I've said it a lot that like half the battle with YouTube in this day and age I don't know if it'll ever change I'm sure it was different back in the day um, when fewer people did it and there was less videos on the platform is just trying to come up with unique content ideas that haven't really been done before and one of my proudest playlists and things that I'm like most excited about filming when it comes to the weekends or whenever there's football on midweek is my bottom tier playlist I absolutely love it I feel like it's unique I feel that it showcases clubs that you wouldn't necessarily ever hear about and um, today I'm not only seeing a game in the bottom tier I've seen just regular bottom tier games with teams who are mid table I've seen the top team in the bottom tier recently I've seen a bottom tier stadium that was built upon a mine I've seen loads of cool unique stories about the bottom tier of Scottish football but if we're talking bottom tier, we're seeing the bottom of the bottom tier today. We are seeing bottom versus second bottom. Wow, we're seeing all the sights today on the way to Saltcoats. Look, on your left, Shawfield Stadium, the abandoned old home of Clyde FC. Wow, look at that, what a view of the sea. And um, yeah, it's not just the big differences between um, today's team and Celtic, which obviously there are hundreds of places between them, um, obviously in where they are in the uh, leagues right now from the very bottom right to the top, 10 divisions between them. Um, but there's also a big similarity as well. Um, Bobby Lennox, one of the Lisbon Lions, is from this very town. There's a statue of him in the town centre, which I visited the last time I was here. I won't take you there in this vlog, um, but I will overlay some clips of that statue. Really, really cool to see such a big legend in in a fairly small seaside town. This is the hub for the uh, teas and the coffees, right? The coffee, what have yeah. we got going on here? Is this the Bovril? That's a Bovril. Oh, that's Just a saucepan of Bovril, staring away. Yeah, yeah. love yeah. that. Yeah, preparing well for the game. For Pia, yep. John, you're the goalkeeper for Royal Albert, the away side mm -hmm. today. How is it being a goalkeeper at this level of football? Absolutely mental. <laughs> I can imagine. Absolute crazy man to be a goalkeeper. Yeah, especially uh, at this level, right? Yeah. I, I guess it's quite physical and. Uh, aye, very, very. Um, just crazy, you know what I mean? It's, you get your bumps and bruises, but you need to brush yourself down. Just that's what it's all about, I suppose, oh, right? Definitely, mate. And um, what do you make of this ground specifically? I've been here before. Right. I quite like it. I quite like these I'm, old first time I've been here. Stadiums, you know. It looks nice. Uh, Proper stadium, grass pitch uh, as well. Definitely old school, like. Uh, and it, in this division, then there's a lot of grounds not like this one that are like uh, 4G Astro uh, cages, basically. Do you prefer playing on this uh, than that? Uh, this is proper old school. This is like you get buzzing when you come to every stadium like this. Look, the stand behind you is a uh, shipping container. I know. Really there's can't. a grass pitch. You can't beat that, no, really. Can't, can't beat that. Don, we meet again. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me down uh, once again to yeah. Campbell, Campbell Park. Park. Campbell Park, that's, that's right. And yeah. I've seen uh, since I've come the uh, yeah. the shipping container behind you has been painted. Yes. There's a few little changes that have been made. Yeah. How are things going um, in that side of the club? Yeah. Well, I think I think that's a fair observation of gradual improvements that we're making both on and off the park. Uh, off the park, we're trying to maintain what we've got. I think as we were discussing a short while ago, uh, we are in conversation, having come together with Tass Thistle, together with Sockets Victoria 
here coming under the one umbrella to approach the SFA uh, with a view to getting funding for a complete redevelopment, Astro Park, new facilities, etc, etc, that would be available to the community as well as for ourselves. Obviously. And there's no full-size Astro pitch in this it's whole town, right? Yes, that's so right. So it's important right. that the club can get something like yes, that sorted absolutely. out to help the community. I mean, there's not a just good three quarters one that we use that's nine aside at uh, Auchin Harvey Academy, just the other side of the main road. Yep. Fine for training, uh, but it's not big enough for a full size game. Of course. And yeah. so with Scotland looking like they're basically qualified for the Euros, yes. I believe the SFA get money through qualification yes. for tournaments like absolutely. that. So with the national team doing so well, yes. do you think the money filters down to help clubs like yourselves? Well, that, that would be ideal, you know, that there's a bit of trickle down. Because even if there's a, even if it's a relatively small percentage, if it's a small percentage of a big sum, that would be a lot of money to us. Yeah. <laughs> and so is that the main thing for you, is to sort the facilities here out and then you can start Absolutely. moving forward as well, it's, it's both. It's about improving the team and improving the facilities. Absolutely. The, the two go hand in hand, really. And speaking of the team, um, yes. I've seen you play twice already this yes. season. That was earlier on in the season. Yes, yes. Still yet to pick up a point, but I think in those yeah. first couple of games you only had 11 players yeah I can see a few more absolutely new faces today so absolutely. you've actually grown the squad since then yes, as well, we right? have. we've grown and developed the squad Patrick so you are a supporter of Solcoats Vicks yes yeah why do you support a team uh, well, at this level well my dad he took me to the first game when I was four and it's all his fault then okay. that's why I'm here <laughs> he's all to blame is he? he's all to blame for that yeah and so has it always been here that they've yes. played since you've yes uh -huh. yeah. been supporting them how yeah. was the ground change standing is? not an awful lot you know uh, it used to be when we come in used to come in at the side yeah okay uh, but that's been changed and they've, like, this used to be a, a, a stand uh, but now they've got the enclosure. Uh, yeah, I like I, this. Yeah, I'd done some training when I was when I was uh, a young, young boy, and it was a big bath. You remember the okay, bath? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And so this was a proper indoor stand, whereas now it's just like a yeah, uh -huh. so yeah, like uh -huh. a little enclosure, yeah, like you uh -huh. say. And so this season then. It's not begun so well. Zero points. Yes. So you're one of you say like maybe three or four three guys or four who actually fans, yeah. come here and yeah. watch uh -huh. them. Like a lot of the people that. I chat to at these games, maybe have a son who's playing, yeah. or they know someone, a friend or something, but you literally yeah, just come to watch the football. Supporter, yeah. Amazing, that's yeah. quality, yeah. Well, nearly 50 years now. What's been the best moment of your the best moment, in life? Uh, oh my goodness, uh, about 20 odd years ago we played in the Scottish Cup uh, quarterfinals. Uh, we're up Scottish at, Junior Cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah Scottish yeah. Junior okay. Cup up at like Rutherglen. Okay. We were down at like 4-1. 15 minutes to go and we won the game 5-4 oh. and it was just absolutely amazing nice and that's the best yeah, moment ever yeah 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 and they're playing today the team that are just above them in the league so yeah. it's a big game at the bottom yeah, of the table game, yeah. what would it mean to get three points oh, today oh goodness it would just be one in the, the, the cup final oh he looked off didn't he I think he was off there, do you reckon? I mean, there's no official linesman, but... Less than a minute, is that? He's offside. He's nil, Royal Albert, one. Yeah! Well done, me man! one all. There you go. Yeah. The comeback's on. Don't get ball roll, tea, coffee, pies, sausage rolls. Pie? Brown sauce, tea, £2.50. The aim is at the bike post. We end up wanting to get it right on the bike post. You reckon that's what we'll do? Just aim for the back post. Oh, yeah, okay. A McTominay special. What's oh, a good ball? Oh! What do you reckon? Is this going in? Uh, no. Oh! No, definitely not. Go on. over Oh! Oh, what a save! So goes are in, Adam. Oh, it's the Englishman, Adam. He's got a score. Oh, salt coats are ahead. Yes. It's Adam who scored as well. So he's an English lad. And when I first came, he used to play for Bournemouth, I think. Boreham Wood. Oh yeah, One of them. One of them. And um, when I first came, he wasn't registered, and they were trying to get his registration with the FA in England. He scored a couple now, hasn't he? This is the first time out of three games I've seen them play this season that they've gone ahead on this channel. 2 1 up. It's a bit empty range, you know, like, like when it's down there and it's up there, and it's yep. obviously it's all uh, scored up there. And yep, and Solko's are actually winning now. 2 1. I know. Which we is... were down 1 0 the first 
10 seconds, I'm yeah, sure it was. something like that, yeah. And they brought it back to 2-1, which is an improvement. How big would it be for them then to actually go on and win this game, get three it points on the board? It would give them a bit of a boost of confidence, you know, to maybe have a crack at like big teams in the league and like upper teams in the league like Glenview and stuff like that. Because they've got a lot of young players, haven't they? Yeah, they've got on the, they keep a 16. Yep. And a few 17, 18 year olds in the team and it's young. Yeah, just. It's good for their confidence if they get yeah. three points today. Mm -hmm. And you're a Rangers fan. Yeah. What do you make of what's going on there at the moment? Oh. Could be better, that's all I'm gonna say. I can't believe it, I can't believe Solcoats are actually winning. This is the first time in three games that I've seen them this season that they've actually been ahead on this channel. Um, but they've actually played well so far today, it's been well matched. Um, the bottom two teams of the bottom tier, the Royal Albert, they went 1 0 up after like 10 seconds, and then Solcoats have scored a few. And it was Englishman, um, a lad called Adam, who I spoke to off camera the first time I came here. They were trying to get him registered, and he's been registered now because um, you have to get FA clearance from England and then SFA clearance or something like that as well. When they're not actually from the country um, so yeah he scored it's 2-1 and the players are just coming back out now for the second half imagine we see Solcoats get their first points of the season it's 3-1 to the Vix look at them Bottom of the bottom league, but look what it means. You're both young players, part of the academy that is connected to Saltcoats, right? Yep. So the plan is to come and play for Saltcoats in a couple of years or uh, uh, this season? No. Next season? Yeah. So how old are you both then? Yeah, it's like 16. Oh, both 16. So yeah. next season you hope to be playing for Saltcoats. How do you think they're getting on today so far? I pretty good though. We play pretty good though. Yeah? Free one up? Uh, for once. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. once. They've not had a great season, but it's amazing to see them actually winning a game and being two goals ahead as well. I don't know if that's yeah. happened all season, being no, two, two up. Um, and what's the final score going to be then? 5-1. Well, 5-1 one. One he's going for. 6-1. Right, so I've missed it because we were uh, looking at something else on my camera, but it's 3 2. You said 3 2, didn't you? Oh, what a strike! Oh my god. For the hat trick, for the hat trick! Oh! That's in, that's in. Oh, that's in! Goal line technology. Oh! Brian, we meet again. Going. Yes, we do. It, it feels like it's been uh, probably decades, but it's probably a couple of months. Yeah, a couple of months. And the first time I saw you was your first game of the season. Yes. You haven't won until today. <laughs> How does it feel to win? Good, I'll be honest, I uh, We should probably get a result uh, a couple of weeks ago in Eglinton. Uh, didn't quite manage it. In experience and just game management, etc. But we were obviously confident coming into the day. Uh, against Royal Albert in a similar situation to us, only have, they've got a few points though, so we're still the underdogs today. But I was quietly confident coming off the back of two weeks ago, so to get the win, I'm pretty delighted. Uh, but as I said to the boys there, it's, and I think I said say to you as well, it's really just like bookending the first chapter of where we are. Yeah. We're now kind of taking a step, and it's now then, right, we need to get better again and go further. So it's for all over in the second half, I think. They had. Royal Albert creating it in the second half. So. They had a few chances, but Solcoats could have easily scored 10, couldn't yeah. they? And uh, what do you think of the physicality today? There's a few little moments there, weren't there? Oh, I hear boy trying to come out. <laughs> there were some funny moments. In recent weeks, I, I'd say a case in point would be like Rangers. They haven't, the players, especially in that game away to Cyprus, right? They yes. haven't looked like they've really given a toss about some of the games. <laughs> and I feel like maybe they've thrown a few games to try and get the manager out. I don't know if that happens at the top level, maybe it does. I would but, suggest it does. But you've seen that 
even today, like when the goals went in, I'd say that a lot of the players at this level are probably losing money to play. Absolutely. To play at this level, they got to travel, they got to miss work and yep. stuff. It seems like sometimes it means more at this level than it does at the top. Like I say, players throwing games. I don't know again if that's yes. really a thing that happens, but right. it seems like players at the top of the game can throw games sometimes. Whereas down here, it's like they're just they're losing money, they're getting injured, they're playing on yep. through things. Like you had to play, for example, at the start of the season when you didn't want to. It's like yes, people actually doing it for Do you know, the right reasons down here. You you're know? right. This is this is the this is football essentially. Winter. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is we are. And I say this to the boys kind of often, I try to kind of rekindle that old spirit of I mean, remember when you used to go to school and the summer nights came in and, and you were under 14s and you had a midweek game and all you thought about sitting in maths class all day was thinking about, oh I get to go and play out there uh, and it's trying to rekindle that enthusiasm to go and play and the beautiful thing about the squad of players that we've got and I mean it's probably it's probably it's probably a Hollywood movie in here somewhere if we eventually actually succeed anywhere but you kind of pull together players from all over the place uh, really young guys a couple older guys the grizzled old manager but the, the amazing thing about the boys uh, who've came together knowing on each other is that they they've, they've been positive the whole time I mean, we've taken some absolute smashings for teams. Port hammered us 13-0. Uh, we get beat against Irvine Vicks 13-0 at the start of the season. I mean, we've regularly lost six or seven or eight. But the boys turn up on the Monday and they're ready to go again and they're positive and they're at it. And that kind of rubs off in me as well. Uh, and it keeps your motivation going. So you can't even know, be happy for them on a day like this. Yep. Because, and I had to say to them uh, just before the, the final whistle went, look, we win the game, celebrate by all means, but we be respectful and we do it in the right way, we be professional. And they did. They're listening to what we're trying to tell them. We're trying, and again, the good thing is they bring the positivity and it's just about us trying to then kind of build the culture with them and, yeah. and, and push them in the right direction so that when they leave here eventually, Sam, and go to other places, they do all the basics and they're just solid, really That's what football's all about, yeah. 100%. Amazing, so perfect. It ties, it ties back into what we talked about before. Yeah. Uh, long may it continue. Legend, Brian, all the best. Thank you, Thank Sam. You.